Hey there, my name's Chris and welcome back to the channel. Today, I want to talk about motion control and motors. This is a stepper motor. The size is a NEMA 34. And if you are unaware what steppers uh, do, it is a DC motor that allows you to control exactly how much it turns uh, and it moves in steps. The way these work is they are driven, not directly, but they are driven by a motor drive. And I have one of those sitting here somewhere. So I have this motor drive. This is what we control with our microcontroller. We're sending it GPIO pulses, and this then drives that stepper motor. I'll go into more detail on how this exactly works in a uh, future video. But the important thing to know here is if we take a look at right here, if I can get it to focus, there we go. It says it either takes five volt or 24 volt logic. So the input from the microcontroller needs to either be five or 24 volt. I'm going to be controlling this with my meadow here. And the meadow, its outputs from its digital uh, controllers, its digital IO, is 3.3. So we need to convert the 3.3 logic output from our code to the 5 volt that this drive needs in order to operate. So uh, today we're going to go over how we do that. There are probably many ways to do it. Uh, the simplest way that I can think of is we're going to use some transistors. This is just a cheap set that I picked up off of Amazon. I'll put a, a link down in the description if you care, but really these are easy to find. The thing to know about transistors is they're a switch, and there are really two types of transistors. There are PNP and NPN. So let's take a look. We've got a PNP or an NPN. This has to do with physically how they work, but I tend to just try to remember their usage based on these P's and N's. If you go P is positive, N is negative, this has more P's, so this is positive. So this connects connects to voltage. It connects to positive voltage. And an NPN's got more ends in it, so more negative. So this connects to ground. That's generally how I remember them for usage. Now, what we've got in that kit you can see it's got PNPs, NPNs. It's got a variety of them. We're actually going to use these two, the 22, 22, and 8550 today. But let's talk a little bit more about how they operate and just how you identify these things uh, when you're looking at them. Now, really, all transistors, their electrical symbol. Let's see if we can straighten this up a little bit. There we go. The electrical symbol for these this is kind of the input or the base. And then they've got two wires. And in fact, if we take a look at one of these, it's got three wires and that really corresponds to those three, right? Now a PNP, its symbol has an arrow here, whereas an NPN has its arrow here. So that's how you tell the difference between them on a schematic. Again, these connect to positive, these connect to ground. So if we look at what we want to do here is we want to have a 3.3 volt signal. So 3.3. And we want to use it to switch five volts. So let's say we've got five volts up here. We're gonna go through a resistor just to minimize current. 
and into our transistor. Now, what I want to do here is I'm going to connect this through a resistor, and I'm just going to call it 10K. We'll call this a 10K for now. And then we're going to go to ground. Since it goes to ground, we're going to use an NPN. So it's direct connected to the ground. And then we're going to tee off right here. And this will be our, let's call it, if I can spell, let's call it our signal. So this is our output. So we want to use 3.3 to drive 5 volt. So let's take a look at kind of how this works. When we apply voltage here, it's going to basically close this like a switch. And when it closes, this then connects to ground. So the signal goes to ground. So when this is high, this connects to ground. So the signal will be low. When this is low, this switch is open. I'm calling it a switch because that's how they act. Since it's open, then we have five volts flows through here. Let's take a look at that on a quick stimulator view. This is effectively the same thing that I had just done. In fact, let's take a look at them side by side. All right. So you can see we've got our transistor here, five volts, three, three. Now what I've done here is I put in a switch. This will allow us to simulate the high or low for the output. And this is the output, I guess, our signal line. You can see right now it's at five volts when this is off. And when I turn it on, this goes, drops down to, you know, 16.9 millivolts or close to zero. Once this is wired to something, uh, through our load to ground, it's going to drop to zero. The thing to note here is right now, our 3.3 volt signal is high. So we said on and this is off. And if I change my signal off, then my output is on. So we're inverted. We could obviously write code that inverts that, but it's a little bit difficult to always keep that in your head uh, logically. I like to have the input as uh, the same as the output. So let's extend this to do that so that when we uh, have a high input to our circuit, we have a high output and a low input equals a low output. The way we'll do that is we will do that with an additional transistor. This time we're going to use a PNP. So if we come back over here to the simulator, let's add a few more components. We'll add a ground. We're going to add a resistor that will act as our load. Another resistor and the PNP. So I've added this resistor here. This is simply acting like the control, the motor drive here. It allows us to look at this node voltage a little bit easier. So if I take a look at this, it's open here and we have, you know, a hundred picovolts out. So pretty darn close to nothing. If I close this, we're at 4.99, so logic high. So what we've done is we've inverted things. So this gives us the ability from 3.3 to switch 5 volts. And in fact, we could switch the 24 volts on this as well. You can use it to switch a higher voltage effectively. Let's take a look at what this looks like if we actually wire it up, just to prove out that it does in fact work. I've got the circuit already built here because really I don't think anybody wants to watch me stab uh, components into a breadboard. 
I'll move it around here so if you want to slow it down or pause and see how it's wired, you can. But what I have is up here, this will be our voltage that we're switching, so 5 volts in this case. This is our input, so this is our signal from the microcontroller. And then this will be the output. So this we should be able to feed 3.3 volts. And this will switch either 0 or 5 volts based on the state of this line here. Now I'm using these transistors like this and uh, resistors because they're through hole components. They're really easy to, well, first of all, put on a breadboard. But also if you have things like perf board that you want to move to afterward, they're easy to solder up. There are some discrete components or some, I guess, uh, some chips that would allow you to do all of this probably with fewer components. Um, but this is simple enough. It's a really easy circuit. So let's see, how do we test this? Well, I'm going to use this microcontroller, again, the Meadow. I'm not going to be using it to actually drive anything right now. What we're going to do is we're just going to use it as a power supply because this has a five volt rail and then it's got a 3.3. So we can just use these two power supply outputs to verify everything is working. So what I'll do is I'll connect five volts to our high here. And I guess this is a good uh, time to take the opportunity to explain for those of you guys who are software developers that haven't done much hardware, how actually a breadboard works, right? So these, this area here, you can kind of, uh, I guess, break this into four areas of the breadboard. This is a power supply rail and they're connected in rows. So everything in this row the top row is connected to one another, and then the next row down are all connected. And then this block here, they're connected in columns. So everything in this column is connected, this one, and so on. Same thing here. These columns are connected, and these rows are connected. This region is separate from this. This is separate from this. So it allows you to breadboard things out. So if you take a look at... Uh, well, it's kind of hard to see, but I've got the second row here. I've got wires that come from this positive rail through. They're connected to all of these resistors and this wire. And that is basically this part of the circuit here. Again, we're just using this as a power supply to prove out that this works. So let me apply power. And then let's grab a meter, move things around a little bit so we can see them. There we go. Now I'm going to connect the ground from here to this ground wire. And the reason for that is so that I can connect our meter to ground and the ground here over to this other board. Then we will connect. Um, we've already got the five volt and actually really that's all we need to do, right? Oh, let's connect the output to the meter so right now with our input loading, so not connected to anything, we've got zero volts on the output of our circuit. If I connect it to ground, so I plug it into ground, I continue to have zero volts. So output of low gets us low here. If I connect it to high, <laughs> helps if we put that wire in, doesn't it? 3.3 volts to high. There we go. 
No. It says 4.6, 4.7. You might be wondering. I thought you said we were switching 5. Well, nominally we're switching 5, but the power supply on this doesn't read 5. If I move this just up to the power rail, you can see it's only providing 4.6, 4.7 input. And we're getting the same thing here as the output. So we're switching whatever this input voltage is to the output. So it's 4.7, but if I move it over here, you can see we're using 3.3 here to switch it. Again, if I go back to ground, we're back to zero. So we are, this would be at a low, and this is a high. So this is effectively switching everything. And really that's all there is to it. I'm going to have to uh, put two of these together for our output to drive our motor drive. But really, this is what I wanted to cover today. In the next video, we will talk about how to hook all of this up to the drive, how to hook the drive to the motor, and what the signals mean, how they work. And we'll take a look in more detail at how you can use one of these to drive a stepper motor and do some actual work. Until then, thank you for watching.